I love that. So great to be here. I'm going to talk about storytelling, not the future, just beginning, middle, end, simple stuff. Um, I have a book, Design is Storytelling, which is full of tools that designers use um, to create emotion and suspense and surprise and satisfaction. So what do we do as designers? We shape the long journey of a user interacting with a product or an experience. And we shape countless little interactions, little micro experiences along the way. Every good story needs two things. It needs action, right? Something's going to happen, something gets done. And it needs emotion. It needs that satisfaction and joy and sometimes pain and sorrow <laughs> that we get from a story. And as designers, we create opportunities for action. That's the plot. It's the function. It's the thing that has to get done. And we also wrap that up in emotion. We create atmosphere and color and sensory detail um, that wraps the plot in actual story, the satisfaction of a story. So where do we start? Every story is a path. We go from A to B. Um, and some stories, the path is so important, it's actually a character in the story. Um, it can be the yellow brick road, or it can be a highway of dust and fury. If I look at this simple image of a forest, that path puts me, the viewer, in the picture, and it invites me to enter and go on that journey. And in a beautifully designed garden, the path always has a curve. It doesn't take us straight, straight to the destination. It, it gives a little bit of mystery that we have to imagine. Where are we going? So imagine my dismay seeing this beautiful Dutch landscape and thinking, oh no, it goes straight to the horizon. That's not good design. So then I took a walk on the path. I entered the painting. I accepted the invitation. And there was an opportunity to turn right. <laughs> and there's a story. And there's little people there doing these things. Um, so if we take an image, here's a beautiful drawing by Christoph Niemann. And he's showing a woman innocently going about her day hanging out some laundry. What could possibly go wrong? Oh no! <laughs> My laundry is assaulting me. This isn't good. <laughs> and here's another drawing by Christoph Niemann. We start at the top. What could these hands possibly be knitting? Oh, was something wonderful. <laughs> the Eiffel Tower, let's all go to Paris. So even something as simple as a single image is unwrapped over time. In a fraction of a second, we read it. The eye moves. We uncover the story over time. When we create more elaborate things, like digital products, it takes long, longer time, and it's a more complicated story. This is the weight loss app Noom, which I highly recommend. Um, and the, the app gives the user many different maps and journeys, including the long, long journey towards your goal. And then each day, lots of other short journeys that keep us engaged as a user. What tasks have we fulfilled? You know, what is our food budget for the day? And these journeys can be even shorter than that. 
these are some beautiful interface icons. I was very interested to just look at how they were designed and illustrated and to find the sense of action and change in so many of them. There's a list that gets checked. There's fists that get bumped. There's a metronome that swings. A conversation that gets responded to. Um, so looking at even something as simple as a single image and finding the possibility for narrative and change and action in it, that is visual storytelling. The rule of threes, an amazing pattern that we see in literature, in humor, and in interface design. Here's Starbucks, their, their promise that you can use their app in three easy steps, which is very cognitively comfortable for, for me as a potential user. I love knowing that I can finish this story. One, two, three, beginning, middle, end. Of course, there's something about that middle one that's actually two steps. <laughs> Right, but by visually turning it into three, it makes me feel good, it makes me comfortable. Um, three steps, except for the second one, is two. Um, three different choices of apps, but actually it's 12. And this makes it easier for me to get into the process of should I buy this product. Um, Three endorsements is more credible to people than seven. <laughs> so I get a little back up there, but I've got that beauty of three. And comedians love the role of threes because it has a rhythm that starts out, I think I know where it's going, da, da, dumb, sex, violence, pastels. Right, the last one is different, it's unexpected. So listen for that rhythm when you hear comedy. <laughs> or a layout like this for a dashboard that gives me three different views. And if I dig deeper, I find everything organized in threes. Even the little three dots, which actually has like 25 different options hidden behind it. But that three makes me feel good. And behavioral psychologists call this choice architecture. That we design the choices that we offer people so that those choices are not overwhelming, right? They don't suck us up right at the beginning. Okay, let's go on a journey the hero's journey. This is a famous pattern. It's found all over literature, all over the world, and it's a circle. And the circle begins like this. The hero is called to action. Let's go somewhere special and do a quest. The hero always says no, always, don't do it. And then she gets asked again, and she says, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and the hero goes to a magical place, a place with its own rules, its own tasks, its own stuff that we want our hero to do. <laughs> and the hero leaves and is reborn. And maybe it's a terrible, scary place. But she always comes back from that magical world feeling better, right? Having solved a problem. And we, as designers, are designing the look, the feel, the logic, the rhythm of that magical world. And we invite a user to cross the threshold into this place, which in literature is often called the green place. 
because it's different. It's not our ordinary life. And color, it turns out, is one of our most useful and easy tools for creating that special world and for showing what it looks like, right? What it feels like. These happen to be fintech apps, and money is green, and these are green places that we go to. <laughs> um, or we could use pink and purple and magical realism to create a more Disneyland kind of experience. Or natural colors to bring us to a sense of a natural world, even though it's an app, right? <laughs> There's nothing natural about an app. <laughs> it's all just light and pixels. Um, but the choice of color here helps to transport me to this place that the designer is creating for me. Okay, and then what does the um, experience feel like? What is the shape of the experience? Has anyone here ever heard of IKEA? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Did you ever feel like you were in a maze? Yeah? I thought so too. I've been to IKEA a few times, and I thought this feels like a maze. Um, well, I did some academic research, there's actually papers on how IKEA is designed, and it's not a maze. Technically, it's a labyrinth, okay? And these are two different cognitive models of how we interact with space, and two different models for how we design experiences for people. So a maze is a puzzle designed to confuse you. A maze has constant choices. Do I go left? Do I go right? Do I go forward? Do I go back? A labyrinth is a fixed path. There are no choices. You simply keep going. And the purpose of the labyrinth is meditative. I want, this is where I want an experience where I can just keep moving and not have to keep making choices. So, if we go back to Ikea, and we are the hero, we are getting out of our car into the parking lot, which is a very ordinary place, and we pass into the big blue and yellow box, and we have entered a magical world, where everything is designed, tagged, branded, marked, right? Um, and we enter this magical world, and there is a path. It's rather like the yellow brick road in The Wizard of Oz. It is literally a different material. It has curbs. It has arrows projected by light onto the ground, right on top of your head. You walk through the arrow as you obey it. Um, and as you travel on this path, you encounter all these magical scenes, like scenes in a story. And it's hard work. And finally, you descend to the belly of the warehouse, <laughs> where you complete the hardest part of your quest, which is checkout. And when you have succeeded in this task, there is a reward. <laughs> and that reward is the final hot dog. <laughs> this hot dog, and the vegan one, is amazing. <laughs> I would like one right now. <laughs> this hot dog is so cheap, they're paying you, the hero, to eat it. Because if you didn't get that hot dog, you would die like Jack Nicholson <laughs> in the maze at the end of The Shining. Ikea doesn't want that. <laughs> so we have two paradigms, the labyrinth, right, the fixed path, and the maze, which is constant choice. 
And it's not an either, it's an either or, but it's not a good or bad, right? Like, I think the experience at Ikea is pretty well designed, <laughs> right? And that, that motion that I make, it's, um, I, I accept it. Um, and as designers, sometimes we are creating deliberately a linear story that starts at the top and goes to the bottom. And sometimes we create an environment of constant choice and many different places that a user can go. Um, and we can use design to help shape that, help people make good decisions, right? guide them in their more individual journey um, through information. Straight path, right? This is an app for the School of Visual Arts. Um, and I, I enter the app, and I am told to obediently scroll down and begin my linear experience of the school. Or I can skip school and go straight to the merchandise, which makes me feel a little bit deviant and like a proper art student and buy my swag, right? Um, so we can give people these choices. Okay, so trials and tribulations. Finally, conflict, right? We're talking about stories and how they reward people, but what about conflict? Good stories have bad things that happen in them, and that's why they keep our attention, right? Our hero makes mistakes, gets lost, goes to the wrong place. This is Kurt Vonnegut's amazing graph of the universal pattern of stories. Um, and he calls this story the man in the hole. So the man starts out, he's perfectly happy. He falls in a hole. Oh no, he's in a hole. He's rescued by the good people of the town. Problem solved. So we have this graph of good, you know, negative emotion, happy emotion. And as designers, you know, we often use these tools like journey maps, where we seek out those points of conflict, right? The friction, the pain points. And we have this graph of like happy, sad, happy, sad. Um, and as designers, we often want to and should <laughs> eliminate those points of conflict, right? So we make a journey map with the purpose of smoothing it out of lubricating the story, uh, not making it harder for people, right? So if I, a payment app or e-commerce or a dashboard, like I don't want a lot of conflict from my design. Um, and, and I want a mentor, right? I want the, the interface to help me to solve problems and to eliminate conflict. Um, so, for example, on the Zelle website, these wonderful middle-aged people will help me, another middle-aged person, feel less scared about getting rid of cash and just using my phone, right? They're, they're my mentors. They're going to help me. They speak to me. Um, this is from the, the Moo uh, print-on-demand website. And after I upload my final artwork, and, and even my payment, I get this message that I have 59 minutes to correct my mistakes. I can't tell you the psychological joy that I feel that I didn't even know I needed this, right? But being told that I have an opportunity uh, to correct my errors is extremely kind. Or how long do I have to wait? Right? Waiting is a really upsetting experience for people, but less so if they know how long. Um, at Disney World, they have signs telling you how long you have to wait for these ridiculous rides. And sometimes um, it'll tell you that the line is longer than it actually is so that you feel great when you get to the end. Um, patients in an emergency department in a hospital hate waiting. This is a point of great conflict. Um, they feel uh, neglected, scared. Why am I waiting? Um, they're likely to leave without care. 
And it's actually a place where a lot of violence happens in hospitals. Um, so a design firm in the UK came up with its beautiful and simple graphic design solution to helping people be less worried about waiting by creating markers and maps that show people where they are in this experience and even what the function of the waiting is. Um, so, we, so, so often we're trying to get rid of conflict, right? <laughs> but there are actually places in design where we want to create conflict and where, where we want to have a sense of emotional urgency or uncertainty. So games, uh, editorial content, behavior change, uh, warnings. Um, these are places where conflict is actually desirable and where our skill as storytellers is there to create that um, sense of mystery and uncertainty. This is a beautiful journey map by an exhibition designer. Um, and, and, and here he's looking at locating the places of emotional intensity in a historical exhibition, where there's going to be representation of conflict. I can't wait to see the Viking Museum. I'm doing that tomorrow. And I'm looking for some good conflict there, <laughs> right? Like, that better not be all evened out. Um, so in exhibition design, we might want to be creating excitement and anticipation. Or in a, in a game where we want the interface to convey urgency and danger and the potential for really bad stuff to go down. Or in a, this COVID-19 dashboard where the designers intentionally pick the color red to emphasize the urgency of the problem. or in a behavior change app where we want to kind of gamify the experience and have a sense of like, how much do I have left, right? How much time do I have for my ice cream sundae? Um, and then of course is the wicked witch who sometimes shows up with really bad conflict, uh, dark patterns like manufactured scarcity, right, on a, uh, a hotel app where I'm told there's only one room left. And now I'm really worried I better get that last room. Um, or subscription traps where it's really hard to break my subscription. Easy to sign up, hard to get out. Um, or error messages that make you feel it's like a really bad person <laughs> when you make a mistake. So that's stuff we don't want to do. But even a game like this, Candyland, which is designed for four-year-olds to play, there's still conflict. There's the molasses swamp and the cherry pit, right? Places that make the game more fun, because you might get stuck there. But everybody makes it to the little candy house at the end. Um, so here's just a wrap up of some of the principles of storytelling uh, that I think are so much fun to apply to design, from the narrative arc, the idea of that, that action, one, two, three, beginning, middle, end, patterning things in a series of three, thinking about user agency, right, the maze where I'm free but can get lost, or the labyrinth, which guides me from beginning to end. Where do we create emotion and how? Um, where do we want conflict? Where is it our ethical goal as designers to eliminate conflict? And where do we want to create it? Where do we want to create a sense of, of game and play in the things that we make? Um, so enjoy, there'll be many stories today. I'm looking forward to sitting in the audience and seeing them myself. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs>Thank you, Ellen. Hi, David. Uh, I'm doing? sorry I don't have a hot dog for you as a. Oh, but a we are not. Hot dog. But it's not the end of your hero's journey, right? There's no. this still potential for some conflict. Vikings and hot dogs, yeah. I'd like to start with a question that came in from uh, an audience member, which is, 
most people or many here are UX designers. Yeah. What is something that they can start doing on Monday to bring some storytelling into their project? What would your process be? I just like to think about action and to, um, to understand that any, uh, you know, an epic story might have a thousand actions. Sorry, what? An epic story, a long story, ha is, is many, many actions put together. Often as designers, we're creating a very small action, mm. right? Like one feature or one part of a much bigger story. So just thinking about that shape of action and how we can make it more emotionally satisfying. Would you draw it out or what would you do? What would you do? What would Monday. I, do? <laughs> I love diagrams. I'm really excited about the sketching exercise later because I just want to like make diagrams. Mm. Yeah. Circles, arcs, threes. Yeah. These are all patterns from storytelling. So those kind of bring unity and coherence to stories. Mm -hmm. Is there a risk that we simplify too much? Can we do that? Like the example you gave where it's like one, two, three, 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 lots of stuff <laughs> happens in number two and then number three, everything is good. Well, you could say that that is misleading people. Yeah. But I don't really think the purpose of it is to mislead people. I think the purpose is to make people feel more confident in mm. trying it. Um, and so I think the key is like, what, what are you trying to do and is it okay to do so that? So the intention is yeah. important. Um, What's something you've learned recently about storytelling? <laughs> um, that it can be really fast. I love looking at TikTok and Instagram oh. and seeing all these like 10, 20 second stories and how engaging they are with just very minimal means that stories are quick. Yeah. Maybe that's a good place to also um, improve our storytelling, to look at TikTok <laughs> and try and... I'm not saying that we should just spend all our time on TikTok, but to <laughs> look there... They're all on TikTok and right now, I can see Try it. and break those stories down and see what mm -hmm. they're doing in 20 seconds, because it's quite amazing. Yeah. There used to be uh, an app called, was it Vine or something? Vine was seven seconds. It was like seconds. seven seconds, you can do it. A whole life in se seven seconds. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ellen, it's been great. I love the examples in your talk. Fabulous. I loved A it. Big David. round of applause for Ellen Lupton. Thank, Thank you. you so much.